Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa and today we are gonna be filming a mukbang. So I've never actually done a mukbang before but I have attempted to film one myself before but it was such a fail so this is the refilm of my mukbang. If you guys don't know what a mukbang is it's basically like a Korean eating show because it originated from Korea but there's so many people that do it now and there's youtubers that only do mukbangs and like ASMR eating videos so I thought I would do one as well because since I'm in Vancouver and if you guys follow me on Instagram I'm constantly eating sushi so I thought that I might as well show you guys what it's all about and what exactly I order and pretty much all of that so I'm gonna introduce to you some of the foods that I always get so just a disclaimer every time I come back to Vancouver if you guys didn't know and you're not from Vancouver or if you're not Canadian Vancouver has honestly one of the best sushis in the world I've never been to Japan but I've heard that the sushi is actually very very comparable some say it's better I can't verify this because once again, I've never been to Japan, but I mean, even if it's a second place, like I'll, I'll take it because I love sushi. Today I have ordered sushi takeout from Sushi Garden. And typically when I'm back in Vancouver, I order from three different chain places, either Sushi Garden, Sushi California, or Sushi Town. All three of those places serve relatively the same things. And it's just honestly like my best a la carte place to get sushi or takeout. Today's video, I'm actually filming in the middle of the afternoon. I just had a light breakfast and I purposely over ordered before my parents are home from work because I'm not gonna be eating everything I order just because if you guys didn't know I recently lost some weight so I'm trying to keep it up so I'm not gonna overindulge also I just feel like I don't really want to encourage that either especially with mukbangs I would prefer if they just eat like an appropriate amount of food like if they can naturally eat a lot by all means but like if they're doing it just for the camera I don't know I just feel like that's a little bit unhealthy so I will not be consuming everything that you see in fact I'm gonna be showing you guys everything that I order and then I'm gonna actually put it on a separate plate because even though I've been in Vancouver for over 14 days now and I'm fine and I assume my parents are fine I still try to minimize contact with them as much as possible so I'm gonna put everything I'm gonna eat in like a separate plate or at least have like one chopstick that's gonna go into my plate so I don't contaminate the food when they get home and they're gonna eat the rest of the sushi but yeah that's pretty much the intro for the mukbang today we are going going to be doing a Q&A mukbang. So I asked you guys on Instagram and also on YouTube the other day to submit your questions. So I've compiled the questions and kind of like categorized them. So we have a big list ahead of us. I'm hoping that this video is not too, too long, but might be long. The other thing I wanted to mention was that I actually did already film a mukbang and it was such a fail just because I couldn't figure out how to eat and talk at the same time. I'm like, how do people do this? Like, I just don't get it. And then I ended up like doing more research on mukbangs and watching more mukbangs myself and then I realized that when you're talking you talk and then when you're eating you're eating and you're actually keeping the footage of you eating because the whole purpose to my understanding is for you to also see me enjoy the food. I feel like I'm a little bit self-conscious about it because I don't know what I look like eating. Like have you guys ever eaten in front of a mirror because I have not? So I don't know maybe I'm like a really ugly eater but also I don't hold my chopsticks properly as an Asian so that's kind of shameful. So please don't judge me. I'm just like gonna have that disclaimer. Also my theory for why my chopstick holding is not proper is because I feel like when you learn how to hold a chopstick as a kid, your parents kind of either they teach you, but in the end you're just like, oh, like I'll just do it however works and like makes the chopsticks work. But if you're learning it as an adult, I feel like you're more likely to hold it properly because you're just like holding it the right way right away. Anyway, that's my theory. If you're Asian and you also kind of like self taught eventually let me know if you relate to this but I definitely do not hold my chopstick properly and I will show you guys in a bit but right now I'm gonna show you guys everything I ordered from sushi garden I purposely wore this shirt because I'm a messy eater and sometimes I see my shirt so I just have to eat with something dark I hope you guys understand so I'm gonna show you the food now give me one second okay so this is the overall 
sushi that we have going on here and I will be going through them one by one. Here we have two orders of salmon sashimi. This is two orders just because I can eat like one order pretty much by myself. So I just decided to order some more for my parents. I have half an order of tuna sashimi. This is toro sashimi. Toro sashimi is pretty much like tuna belly. So that's toro sashimi. This is Alaska roll. And what Alaska roll is, is that there's avocado, they have salmon on top and there's like this really special sauce on top. I also ordered prawn tempura, especially at the following chains that I told you guys about. So Sushi Garden, Sushi Town, and Sushi California. They make the best tempura. I highly recommend. It's so crispy. It doesn't even get soggy. So even though it's kind of cold now because I've had the food for a little bit, it's still really crispy. Finally, let's get to the rolls. So I'm going to show you up close when I'm eating, but I wanted to order a California roll just to show you guys because a lot of the California rolls that I've seen in Ontario, I find that they kind of cheat. They don't blend the imitation crab, whereas in Vancouver, they always do. And I find that it tastes better because they mix it with like mayonnaise or whatever the sauce is. This one you can't see right now, which once again, I'll hold it up. But this one is top scallop roll and this is my must have. This is spicy tuna roll. Once again, I'll hold it up again, but this is spicy tuna roll and it's so good. Last one is yam tempura roll. You guys can't really see it here, but I'm also not gonna be eating this because this is my dad's favorite and I actually just don't like it, but it's just like yam tempura on the inside. Take a close look because I'm not gonna be eating this. So yeah, anyway, this is pretty much the sushi. So if I'm ever alone and if I ever have to order just for one person, like by myself, what I usually do is I order half a order of salmon sashimi, half a order of toro sashimi, and then one chopped scallop roll. And then that would usually be my dinner. Without further ado, I'm gonna get started on the eating. Okay guys, I'm here with my plate of sushi. I just grabbed a couple of pieces of sashimi and then two pieces of each roll. So to start off with, I always use wasabi. So I always use a lot of wasabi actually. I just pretty much took one plate of wasabi and I actually bought this recently for my parents. This is the low sodium soy sauce because the soy sauce that you get from the restaurants are typically the red bottle and that's higher sodium. So this trick I actually learned from Erin. If you guys watch my vlogs and you guys know who Erin is, she's actually very healthy. So she's the one that taught me that you can ask for low sodium. So I highly recommend. So right now I'm just like blending this together. As you guys can see, I do not hold my chopsticks properly. So you're supposed to hold it so that the chopsticks are like apart and they're like clamping together when you grab things. I hold it so that it like makes an X and like I grab it when the X like intersects, if that makes sense, like this rather than this. Anyway, that's just me explaining it. I don't know if this looks appetizing. I don't know how these mukbangers make their food look so good and just like so big in front of the camera. I'm sorry, I'm not a mukbanger, so just please bear with me. So anyway, I have my sauce and now I'm gonna start eating. But before I actually start eating, I'm just gonna let you guys know how the questions are gonna be answered. So I am gonna try to answer every single question. I'm gonna start off with any of the about me's and kind of like the random questions and then a couple of very FAQ questions. So there were a lot of questions about Toronto versus Vancouver and which one I prefer. And then there's also a lot on school and on career. So I'm gonna do that all in that order. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna eat is salmon sashimi. Guys, this is literally my favorite thing in the whole world. Like if I can pick one item to eat for the rest of my life, it would probably be salmon sashimi or chopped scallop roll since there's like a bit more mix of protein, veggies, and carbs. You know, this is like the one protein I would eat. Okay, so yeah, I just like dip it in my sauce and I'm quite aggressive with it. Oh my God, this is so weird. If I eat really ugly, I just love sashimi, okay. Anyway, let's get started on the first question. So the first question is, do you speak Mandarin? If so, say something. So yes, I do speak Mandarin. I was actually born in Taiwan and I didn't move here until I was six years old to Vancouver. So I actually didn't know English for the first like six, seven years of my life. My first language was actually Taiwanese because I grew up with my grandmother and she only spoke Taiwanese because she was in the southmost part of Taiwan. And then the second language that I know is Mandarin. And then finally, 
at the age of like six or seven, I learned English. So yeah, I can say something. Someone said, answer the next question in both English and Mandarin. So I'll do that. But also I just want to have another disclaimer. I lost all my Taiwanese so I can understand, but I can't speak it anymore. For Mandarin, I can speak it, but my cousins tell me that I have a very strong English accent and also my Mandarin isn't that good. It's like functional now. I don't really know any of like the slang. I don't know any difficult vocabulary. I just know how to get by. So that's pretty much where my Mandarin is at, but I will answer the next question in Mandarin and English. So the next question is, what is your Myers-Briggs type indicator, AKA like the 16 personalities? So I'm gonna answer in Mandarin. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Like if you speak fluent or if you speak really well, just please don't judge me. 我的 16 personality type si ENFP. I kind of like butchered it because there was only like three Chinese words. Maybe I'll do it for the next question. So basically I said my Myers-Briggs personality type or the 16 personalities is ENFP dash T. And I actually took this quiz twice. I took it once in 2015 and once in 2018. And my results are exactly the same. The percentages are just different, but the percentages are relatively like weight wise the same and it just like got more intense. So E is for extroverted, N is intuitive, F is feeling, P is prospecting, T is turbulent. 2015, my percentages were 66, 52, 30, 41, and 33. And in 2018, my percentages went up to 82, 66, 53, 83, and 74. So all of them kind of stayed the same. So I guess I haven't changed. My role is a diplomat. I don't know if that means anything to any of you because it doesn't mean anything to me. I should read up on it. And then my strategy is social engagement. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Okay, let's eat the second thing. So the second thing that I said I liked is like Toro. This is what Toro sashimi looks like. It's just like more fatty tuna. I love this. It's also kind of more expensive out of the sashimis. So they always have to check if there's Toro left. Every time I eat sushi, I just get so happy. Next question. Okay, this one I'll actually answer in Mandarin. Question is, what has been your favorite song to jam to? This one was actually by my best friend, Michelle. Thanks for submitting. The answer is actually very much me and Michelle. So my answer is love. If I want to be productive, I listen to his album all the time. If I want to be like doing stuff and like cleaning my room, I always listen to vlog. I also have a few really good Spotify playlists that I made that I will leave down below. Okay, so my answer in Mandarin. 我想要做很多东西的时候，我喜欢听vlog。我也有很多Spotify playlists，然后我会把它留在下面给你看。That's <laughs> all the Mandarin I'm gonna entertain today because I'm kind of embarrassed because of my accent. And so I'm gonna go with my chopped scallop roll. This is what chopped scallop looks like. As you guys can see, they like chop it up, obviously. Fun fact, I cannot find this roll anywhere in Ontario, anywhere. This is, I feel like exclusive to Vancouver or something. So if you guys are here in Vancouver, I highly recommend trying chopped scallop roll. It's honestly like everybody's favorites, at least all my friends, so. This is so awkward. <laughs> okay, next question. What is my favorite friend's character? My favorite friend's character, I actually like them all, but my least favorite is Ross, and my favorite is probably Phoebe. I know some people find her annoying, but I love Phoebe. I also feel like for Phoebe, she just like makes the show so much more entertaining. Like she'll take a really mundane moment and she'll like, weird it out, you know what I mean? It's like that scene with the Santa Claus. Phoebe goes like, oh, my roommate is gonna come back on December 26th, and then Rachel's like, oh, maybe she's Santa Claus, and she's like, you know what I mean? Just like little moments like that, or even like where she's like, Chandler and Monica, Chandler and Monica. Like these are all like golden moments. Even when they were pranking Chandler and Monica, having Phoebe pretend to seduce Chandler, like these are all Phoebe moments. You know what I mean? Anyway, she's probably my favorite. I'm gonna quickly fast forward and kind of like, spit out the next few questions because they're kind of quick. The next one is how much income do you set aside for discretionary purchases? So like makeup and stuff like that. For me, I personally don't budget like that. I feel like I take out everything that 
I need to spend on rent and everything. I know my monthly fixed costs for my living. And then after I take that apart, I know what I have left. And then from there, I'm able to kind of decide like what I want to spend. So I'll like keep track of all the things I've spent and then I'll have to make decisions whether or not I want to spend more or less. But honestly, I don't even really do that anymore. I think that I try to make more. That way I don't have to so much restrict myself on my spending by having additional income streams and stuff like that. So when I have more additional income streams, it's been a lot easier on my life and I don't have to be so careful. But then when I don't, then I have to be super careful. And the way I do it is by taking my fixed costs and then balancing the rest for my fun purchases. The next question is how do you touch up your makeup? So how I touch up my makeup is I just use the MAC Studio Fix. I'm in color NC25. It comes with like this little cotton pad or whatever and it's just in my purse. It's super easy to touch up. The other thing is the Super Goop setting powder with SPF. I mentioned it in my last August favorites video if you guys want to hear me talk about it. So either one of those items. Next item I'm going to eat is spicy tuna. Same thing, just put it in my little soy sauce. Mm. Next question, what countries have you visited and which one is your favorite? So I've been to a lot of countries mostly because in my last year of university, I went on exchange. So I did a lot of European countries. I'm not gonna list them all. I also did Australia. I've done Colombia. These are the more like uncommon places I would say. I've done Turkey. I've done various parts in the States. The place that I liked the most is by far Positano. This is getting real specific because I can pinpoint the happiest day of my entire life, guys. It was when my family and I rented a boat in Positano Tano and like Capri area and we were just like jumping off the boat the entire day and it was just so sunny and it was so beautiful that was honestly the best day of my entire life so far nothing has topped that <laughs> therefore it is my favorite place because the best day of my life happened there so that's pretty much my favorite place basically anywhere along that coast is my favorite next question is what is your height and weight and how do you stay so slim so guys I'm gonna do another video on intermittent fasting because I realized there were a lot of questions on it and I just feel like it's gonna take over this video. So it will be in another video about intermittent fasting. Next question before I take another piece, what is your go-to bubble tea order? I feel like Americans pronounce it boba, but like everyone here in Canada calls it bubble tea. Anyway, my go-to drink as a Taiwanese person, so please listen to my recommendation, write this down. From Cha Time, actually I think they have it at Share Tea too. Honey oolong milk tea, half honey, add whatever toppings you want, less ice. The reason why I like it is because they don't use sugar, they use honey, and and the oolong tea instead of like roasted tea makes it taste so good. That's honestly my go-to bubble drink order. Next piece I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna go with the regular tuna. So if you guys can tell, this is what the regular tuna looks like. And by the way, if you're wondering what this white thing is, it's just shredded radish. There we go. I feel like tuna is like my least favorite sashimi, but I just wanted to order it to show you guys. Also the pieces in Vancouver are huge. So good. Okay, next question. So the next question is actually a breakup question. So how to deal with breakup and also what happens when all your friends are taken and if you're surrounded by them. Honestly, the first week and or whatever is gonna definitely suck, like the first little bit. You just have to get through that hump. And I feel like the best way I did it was I called my friends 24 seven, especially during a pandemic, I couldn't physically be with them. If you can physically be with someone, that's even better. For me, like I was on FaceTime 24 seven with a different friend. I kid you not, my friends were so annoyed of me the first like two weeks. Like the minute I hang up with someone, I call another person and it's just like keeping me company, keeping me distracted. That's honestly what you have to do. After that, definitely like also have your moments where you're just like, crying and like sobbing and like watching a movie or whatever it is and just like lying in bed definitely need to go through that and then eventually it will get better honestly as time goes on it will just get better to answer the question about what happens if all your friends are taken personally 
personally, I like to hang out with couples that don't make you feel excluded. Like I don't like to single out and hang out with a couple if they're gonna PDA all the time. If I'm gonna hang out with a couple like that, I'm gonna make sure that I have other single friends around me so we can keep each other company while they're making out or something, you know? Otherwise, I have a lot of couple friends. Like if you guys have seen my vlogs, I am literally around Eric and Jess all the time and it's always just the three of us. They never make me feel alone. And even if they do, I kind of just laugh about it. I'm just like, okay guys, like get a room or whatever. I don't think that seeing other people happy makes me sad only because I know that if the choices were to be alone, or to be with the wrong person, I would just rather be alone. So I think knowing that, coming out of every breakup, just keep thinking that way and also don't think everything is permanent. Like just think like if you really, really, really wanted to, like could you and would you get back with them? I feel like through a breakup, you just have to kind of think that it's just for the best. And if it's meant to be, they'll come back. And if it's not meant to be, then it happened for the right reason anyway. So that's kind of just like some of the things I keep telling myself, like if it's meant to be, it'll happen again if not then this is for the best surround yourself with really good friends positive friends and that will help you get over your breakup and I'm very sorry to be hearing that you're also going through this but you know it will get better I promise and also another thing that I realized that helped me during this entire time is TikTok and I kid you not guys like TikTok has become one of my more favorite platforms just because they keep it so real on there like the people on TikTok are just like not ashamed to talk about being cheated on on. The platform isn't like Instagram where they're selling this false reality. Like you're not just seeing like two couples on the top of somewhere like really glamorous that's travel. You're like, oh my God, like how do they have a perfect life? In reality, that's not true, right? And on TikTok, like there's so many people sharing genuine stories and also look at the comments, like the comments in there, people are so supportive and you realize that you're not alone. Like there's so many people that have been in the wrong relationship for like so many years or people who have married the wrong person and divorced early on or whatever it is. When I was on TikTok during my breakup, I feel like it helps me so much because it kind of emphasized that this was the right decision or like we're doing the right thing here and also you're kind of realizing that you're not alone in all of this, if that makes sense. So I highly recommend TikTok, even if you are single and you're just like, why am I single? TikTok, because you're gonna find a lot of other single people on there. Time to eat another one. I think I'm gonna eat the California roll. Okay, I'm not gonna show you guys because I already showed you there and it's kind of coming apart, so. Okay, next question. What did I learn about buying an apartment? Do I have any tips? So buying my apartment, honestly, in retrospect, ended up being one of the best things that's happened to me. Not just like the buying apartment milestone, but because it actually made me realize how much I'm into renovating and like interior decorating. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably know that I'm gonna start another home renovation project. So if you guys have enjoyed all my apartment stuff, like stay tuned, I'm really excited. I'm gonna do another series on YouTube. So that was definitely just like a really happy coincidence. And part of the reason why I found out was because I have zero family in Ontario and I had to manage that renovation a thousand percent on my own. I had to find my own renovator. I learned so much from that experience. I think buying a home aside, like what I learned about myself was absolutely tremendous. Like I just learned so much about how to like deal with all this adult stuff on my own when my family's not around. Also my parents don't speak like fluent English. So I had to navigate pretty much everything, bought everything in terms of renovating. I had to make all these decisions, financial, like all of these things. My apartment experience helped me grow up a thousand times faster than I would have if I didn't have that apartment experience. The other thing is in terms of if you guys are looking for tips on buying your first home, I wrote a really good blog post step by step step what you need to do even if you are not ready to buy one right now just take a read because you might be able to learn a few things that you're gonna need when you buy your first home so I highly recommend reading up on that blog post and I made it super informative so I will leave a link down below for you guys to see
The next category of questions is Toronto versus Vancouver questions. I don't know why I got so many questions about Toronto versus Vancouver. So I'm just gonna read all the questions and I'm gonna answer it all together. What do you like and don't like about living in Toronto? Do you ever plan to move back to Vancouver or is Toronto your forever home? Which one do you prefer living, Vancouver or Toronto? Why did you move to Toronto? Basically, I moved to Toronto actually initially for school and then I stayed for my job. So that's like the short answer. I will do more of the in-depth ones in the next category. So long story short, that's why I'm in Toronto. Do you ever plan on moving back to Vancouver? Probably not. And if I do move back to Vancouver, I think that it will definitely be something way after I have a family. I think that in my 20s, I definitely want to be in Toronto. In my early 30s, could still be in Toronto. I think that if I do move back, it would have to be something like 35 years old and older type of situation. But even then I'm open to not living in Vancouver. The reason why I prefer living in Toronto at this very stage is just because if you guys are not from Vancouver, the field that I studied in in school was business. And I feel like a lot of these business opportunities like company headquarters, banks, like all of these other potential opportunities, they're all in Toronto. If you're gonna be in Canada, obviously you can go to like various parts of the States, but like in Canada, I would say that Toronto probably has like the most opportunities based on what field I studied in in school. I just don't think that there are as many in Vancouver. The other reason is because honestly, I do also like the weather and the lifestyle a lot better in Toronto just because I feel like in Vancouver, the weather, although it is not too hot and not too cold, it's not typically good weather and I have seasonal depression. And since it rains like half the year outside of summer months, it gets so depressing to me. Like even right now, there's no sun out. It's like super cloudy, even though you're seeing light, but like it's very, very cloudy most of the time. And it's also very wet in like the fall, winter, winter, spring months. For me, like I would just rather be a lot colder and embracing the snow, but I'm seeing sunlight rather than having like gloomy days like all the time. So that's like a weather preference for me. Like a lot of people don't want to live in Toronto because of the cold, which I totally get. But if you're not someone who's like really sensitive to, you know, like the darkness and stuff, I think, yeah, Vancouver would be like a much better choice in terms of weather. But for me, I need the sun. So Toronto is a better alternative and I will take the cold for now. What do I like and don't like about living in Toronto? The other thing I like about Toronto is that it just seems like there's so many more people and there's like endless things to do. I feel like in Vancouver, it's so much smaller. The downtown itself is like so much smaller. You could walk the entire downtown Vancouver in a few hours, but in Toronto, if you want to walk the entire downtown, like good luck. I don't know how long that's going to take. That's not going to be a one day thing. I don't think, especially if you want to go to like every single area. So I just feel like in my twenties, it's like definitely a lot more fun. Like I like meeting new different people and stuff. So I like that about Toronto. Obviously the few things I don't like about Toronto, their sushi sucks. Number two, their water sucks. Vancouver water is delicious. I don't know if you guys have tried Vancouver tap water, but it's great. Toronto tap water, not so great. The other thing also bagged milk. Okay, like we need to get rid of that. Like bagged milk is like an Ontario thing. Whereas like here, if you want to buy a big jug, it's like in like one of those cartons. I'll leave a picture here, but like not in a bag because that's so weird. But yeah, that's kind of like what I like and don't like about Toronto. And obviously like the super coldness when it gets to the winter months, but if I'm picking the gloomy days, then I'd rather the cold. That's kind of the answers to this section. Okay, I need to get eating because like, what am I doing? This is a mukbang. I'm gonna get some Toro sashimi. Mmm. I need to eat this. Okay, I'm gonna eat this too. Oh my God, guys, I love this tempura. Oh no, it got on my laptop. So I just like dip it in here and Oh no, I can't double dip. Okay, I'm gonna rip that top off so I can dip the other side. It is still so crunchy. Chopped scallop roll again. I feel like the more I chop, it's making me eat slower and I'm getting full faster, even though this is like, actually, yeah, this is more than I would eat typically, but still.
By the way, I'm sorry if I'm doing this mukbang thing wrong. Honestly, this is my first one, so please bear with me. So the last set of questions is on school and on my career. These were also kind of like frequently asked questions, so I kind of clumped them together and clumped the similar looking questions together as well. The first one, what did you study in university? So I studied business. I went to U of T the first year to study Rotman and then did a little bit of research, found out that I liked the style of Western Business School better, so for Ivy, and then I I ended up transferring there after my first year being in Toronto and then went to Western for the business program and did that. And then I also did psychology in between starting the business program in Western. So what is your job? My full-time job outside doing this because this is not my nine to five job. My nine to five job is I am in Bell and I would say the official title of my job is called Marketing Incentive. So basically what it is, is my team, we create incentive programs end to end for call center agents. So we do all the planning, the strategy, the execution, like everything for call center agents. And basically we hype them on their metrics, their call center agent metrics and whichever agents perform really well, we give them prizes. Last year, it was a lot more fun because some of the prizes would include going to a concert and I got to go to some really cool concerts for work. For example, Ariana Grande. We also got to go to sporting events, but this year, obviously, since all of that is canceled, we're just giving them prizes. But yeah, that was pretty much like all that it was. We would create all the plans and then we would like market it to the call center agents and then we would also do all the results for their plan pretty much. That's pretty much what I do for my full-time job. The next question is, what is your dream job? Honestly, my dream job is just to work for myself one day and start something. I don't really know what it is yet. I think that would be ideal because as much as I love socializing and my coworkers, I absolutely love them. I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, I would love to own my own thing. So I think that's like kind of my dream job. I'm going to eat something before I get to the next question. So I'm going to eat this Alaska roll. Okay, I'm not going to show you because it's falling apart, but... <laughs> This is like a full on avocado roll. So the next question is talk about your college experience. So like I said, for my college experience, I went to U of T and Western. I would say that majority of my college was at Western. So I'll just kind of talk about that. I absolutely loved going to Western. I feel like mostly the people there and the culture there, it was just so much work hard, play hard. Like I've genuinely never met any type of student that worked as hard as Western students did, but also partied as hard. I think it was just like such a great mentality. It's like you work really hard, but at the same time you reward yourself so you learn that type of work-life balance. My college experience was honestly so amazing. I participated in a couple of clubs that till this day are still my lifelong friends. I also have roommates that I spontaneously met, which probably I'll tell this story another time, but my best friends, a lot of them are from Western for sure. We have this secret group that I guess I'll expose today because I, I don't know if anyone's gonna make it to this far into the video. We have this secret Instagram group called Virgins for Life and it's just me and my roommates. Honestly, till this day, we're still so close and we like tell each other everything. They were largely my support group during the breakup as I was telling you guys and like a couple other people just FaceTiming them all the time. My college experience was honestly like really awesome. I think that do your research. I think the mistake that I made was because I, you know, live in Vancouver. I didn't know that much about schools out East. So I just picked based on reputation. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. I think that like it was more of a fit thing with me. In U of T, it was more lecture styled, which is still great. But for me, I think as someone with ADHD, I needed someone to kind of like hold me accountable. So the business program at Western resonated with me a lot more because participation, attendance, those are all tracked rather than sometimes some of the classes at U of T, like nobody really cared if you showed up. So I think like definitely do your research, find a program that will best suit you and your personality and do like school visits like I never did a school visit which in retrospect I should have done that so I think that's pretty much my advice because it wasn't until after I already spent a year at another school for me to do the research on Western and then move there. Okay, so the last question is how I got into my nine to five job. So basically my nine to five job, I got into it actually at the Ivy Marketing Summit. I think that's what it's called. I was just participating in one of the case studies and the recruiter from Bell, she was sitting in the audience and she saw my PowerPoint presentation. And after the PowerPoint presentation, she came up to me and she's like, hey, Hey, like I really enjoyed your presentation like who made the PowerPoint and I was like 
I did. I made it from scratch and she really liked it. And then she offered me an interview, even though they had already finished recruiting for Bell, I actually didn't even apply because I applied for the exact same internship program when I was a psychology student before I got into Ivy and they rejected me. So I was like so bitter about that. I was just like, you know what? Like they probably have me on file already and know that they rejected me. So I just kind of assumed they would probably reject me again. So I just didn't do it. Yeah, the recruiter approached me later and she asked if I wanted an interview. So I interviewed after everyone was initially recruited and then that was how I got my internship. And then from the internship, I just signed back full time. And one of the reasons why I signed back full time was because I really liked Bell's work-life balance culture. I actually was looking for a nine to five job because initially I was thinking about potentially going into management consulting, but the hours and the travel was gonna be crazy. And I wanted to start on this passion project, which is YouTube and Instagram. So I ended up picking a job that would allow more and better work-life balance rather than, you know, like investment banking, management consulting and stuff like that. So I ended up choosing and signing back with Bell. So that was pretty much how I got my job. So anyway, this video is actually getting quite long and I actually am getting so full. I think just like from eating and talking with you guys, it slowed down my eating. So I'm getting full so much faster, but I usually eat like, yeah, I guess like around this much or more, but like also my stomach shrunk ever since I started fasting and like losing weight. I will do another video, like I said, on intermittent fasting. So stay tuned for that just because I didn't want that to take over the entirety of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Like I said, it was my very first mukbang. So please let me know how I did. And maybe if it goes well, I will do another mukbang. Like I feel so self-conscious when I'm eating in front of the camera. So I hope you guys still enjoyed this experience and hopefully your questions were answered. If you had more questions, I actually did answer all of your questions, but if there were questions that were not initially on the list, please leave a comment down below and I will for sure get to it in the comment section. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.